Welcome friends to another Stuff Station 1 review from my collection of timepieces and accessories across a broad price range. Items are showcased for their aesthetics, materials, manufacturing or downright quirkiness. Now, today's watch that I have in front of you is still box fresh. It is the Grand Seiko SB GA211, otherwise known as the Snowflake. Now, this has really become an iconic and I suppose a timepiece that has really uh, catapulted Grand Seiko in the modern era of horology and watchmaking. And this particular piece has been around since 2010 and it has really sort of garnered quite a, a following just purely because of that rather unique dial, the mixture of materials within the actual case and bracelet construction, and obviously the actual uh, spring drive movement, which you can see there behind that other blue sticker. Now, the snowflake to me really represents the aesthetics behind watch design. And it's really about that spring drive movement and really it's a story of ultimate sort of calmness and serenity and the evolution of the mechanical watch movement. Now in this video I'm going to be producing a, a series of videos where I'll focus on the dial, the movement, the actual case and bracelet and the cr uh, crown construction. Um, today I'm really going to focus on the actual dial and the actual movement itself. Now if we have a look at that dial, what it's really sort of come to represent is and a lot of people sort of liken it to freshly fallen snow. Um, some people also draw the parallels between watercolour paper, of rice paper and you know it's a really crisp white matte tone and the thing that I really love about it is the fact that it's really sort of juxtaposed against uh, certain other elements and that is the, uh, the actual power reserve indicator uh, and we can see in that power reserve indicator that it has those sort of textured uh, graduated lines. It's also juxtaposed against that really nice sort of mitered and polished uh, date window. The indices, I mean they are just diamond bright. The edges really um, appear at times sort of almost black like it's been black polished and they are you know multifaceted. They have a range of different angles on there. Uh, what's also nice is that that dial is juxtaposed against that lovely uh, Grand Seiko applied logo there that we can see above the Grand Seiko script at 12 o'clock. The Spring Drive logo we can see has been printed there. For me it's a little bit sort of plain and you know it's a sort of a basic Arial type font. I think they could have you know push the boat out a little bit there on the actual design of the actual font style. Now the hands themselves they are in that classic sort of Dauphine style and they are highly highly polished. The tops are really polished as are the angled edges and it really plays with the light and it is in total contrast as I've mentioned to that textured white dial. Um, and it's really sort of ultimate sort of contrast. Um, the ultimate contrast is against that blue heat treated seconds hand. Not only the blue of it but that you know real gliding uh, seconds hand. So ultimately it's really it has been highly uh, executed the actual dial each part of the dial and they really all the elements really sort of contrast each other so well and you can see that the the watch has been crafted or rather elements of the watch have been cra uh, crafted to a really high standard by really pure sort of artisans in uh, Japan ultimately creating uh, a, a dial and its component parts to a very high standard of finish. Now not only is the 
snowflake really sort of synonymous for that gorgeous dial that textured snowflake like dial but what the snowflake and really grand seiko has come to sort of symbolize is the actual movement and particularly with the spring drive movements that smooth sort of sweep now what we have to understand and what we have to remember here that spring drive is really a almost like a hybrid sort of technology where it's a combination of mechanical and quartz working in unison together. Now, that combination of mechanical and quartz was really uh, the brainchild of a Seiko Epson engineer by the name of Yashikazu Ahane. Now, he actually developed or started to develop the actual movement back in the 1970s and the patents were actually granted for uh, spring drive back in 1982 and the actual movement itself or the, uh, the the first sort of spring drive movement itself was actually shown at Basel Fair in 1997 and the first commercially available pieces were available the year after in 1998. Now with spring drive, instead of using uh, the normal sort of Swiss sort of uh, lever escapement, it uses a quartz oscillator. And but the thing we have to understand is that when we say quartz, there are no batteries involved here. Rather, the uh, quartz if, if you think of you know normal sort of quartz battery operated watches, yes, they have quartz watches that have uh, you know, a minute and hour hands and second hands, but quartz often have watches that have digital displays. But the thing we have to remember is that with spring drive, it is purely hands. We only have hands. And the spring drive is really powered by a mainspring in a barrel, you know, as the vast majority of mechanical and automatic uh, watches, and especially watches from uh, Switzerland. But in essence, the spring drive movement is basically a mechanical movement, but with an electromagnetic escapement, which is regulated by a quartz oscillator. So spring drive, ultimately, it straddles between the two, where it's not nearly a mechanical watch nor it is nor is it a quartz watch and that to me is actually sort of quite unique and ultimately what it results in is this lovely gliding sweep of that seconds hand and really that's why I acquired this piece you know um, I have quite a few traditional sort of Swiss mechanical watches and I really wanted to acquire something that is essentially sort of hybrid technology now we live in an age where there is a lot of hybrid technology that is being developed for example within sports cars and you know I see that watchmaking uh, should be really uh, an evolution of that you know you can still enjoy you know your traditional Swiss lever sort of escapement mechanisms but at the same time it's really you know good in my opinion to actually just sort of open your eyes and just open the horizons a little bit So if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing, liking or having a dialogue by pressing some of the buttons below. So many thanks and goodbye for now.